Good morning, everybody, and uh, Selamat Pagi Samayar. Uh, today, I'll give you a lecture about marine metagenomics. Okay, let's start. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, to. okay, the title is Marine Metagenomics, and I'm Dr. To of Kwansegaku University. Before starting my lecture, I'll briefly introduce myself. So uh, my, uh, <clears throat> the field of my expertise is uh, uh, molecular evolutionary biology and the computational biology. <clears throat> so uh, in my laboratory, nobody use a flask nor a test tube, a completely dry laboratory. And my main subject is uh, uh, <clears throat> a molecular evolution of proteins. <clears throat> and I mainly uh, investigate, uh, 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 so, and uh, uh, my favorite compute, uh, computational language is uh, uh, C, uh, uh, Java, and uh, R, and C, and uh, uh, SQLite, and Maxima. And in my laboratory, everybody uses a Macintosh. The motto of my laboratory is, uh, okay, uh, so no Mac, uh, no life is a motto of my laboratory. <clears throat> okay, this is a picture of my laboratory. As I told, uh, our laboratory is, is uh, completely dry. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so there are, as you can see, the Macintosh is placed on the every desk. And uh, Vivian Sensei is operating this Zoom meeting in my laboratory. <clears throat> and as I told, I'm investigating proteins with various information. So nucleotide sequence and uh, amino acid sequence, a three-dimensional structure of proteins, and genome information. <clears throat> But honestly speaking, I have not directly uh, used the metagenome data in my uh, uh, investigation. However, my students previously investigated the uh, metagenome data and, uh, <clears throat> and I uh, edited a book of bioinformatics two years ago. Uh, I'm sorry, it is written by Japanese, but uh, one of the chapter is uh, <clears throat> Uh, written about the uh, metagenomic analysis. So today I'd like to share my knowledge uh, the, uh, obtained from my students and the author of the, this uh, book. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> okay, so the uh, theme of today's lecture is marine metagenome. And next I'll speak about the sequence technology. Uh, especially about the uh, next generation sequencers. And uh, after that, uh, I'll speak about the, uh, what uh, the NGS can do. Uh, next generation sequencers, uh, is a, uh, as the name suggests, it is, uh, it is a sequencer. So the function is to determine the nucleotide sequence of the uh, nucleotide sequences. But uh, by using the uh, uh, next generation sequencers, we can obtain various biological knowledge. I'll uh, explain about it. <clears throat> then I'll uh, speak about metagenome analysis. 
And uh, uh, finally, I'll speak about the marine metagenomics. Uh, the, uh, I told that the uh, nucleotide is a building block of DNA, but uh, correctly speaking, the, it is a deoxyribonucleotide. And uh, uh, the uh, nucleotide uh, consists of the three units, a phosphate group and five carbon sugar and the base. <coughs> And uh, uh, the uh, DNA uses a four uh, uh, bases. Uh, so cytosine, thymine, adenine, and guanine. And the <coughs> positions of five carbon is numbered uh, like this. So one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, or five prime. And the phosphate group is uh, <coughs> uh, attached to the uh, five, carb five prime carbons. And the uh, base is attached to the uh, one prime carbons. And uh, <coughs> all the living organisms use the four types of nucleotides as a building block of DNA. The phosphate and the, uh, sugar are common uh, among the nucleotides, but the bases are different uh, <coughs> among the four uh, nucleotides. Okay, the, uh, we can see the phosphate and uh, sugar uh, makes up the DNA backbones. And the uh, DNA strand has a directionality. The directionality is defined by the carbon numbering. So five prime to three prime. The, here, the chemical structure of DNA consisting of uh, four, nucle uh, four nucleotides is shown. However, the uh, length of DNA strand is, in the actual problems is very long, hundreds to billions. So uh, to treat such long data, the chemical structure expression is inconvenient. Uh, instead, the one letter expression is adopted. As I told, only bases are different among nucleotides. So uh, DNA strand is expressed as a, uh, the one dimensional arrangement of the uh, bases. In the expression, the cytosine ex uh, is uh, expressed uh, by a letter C and adenine is expressed uh, by, le uh, by A and the thymine is expressed as T and the guanine is expressed as G. Okay, uh, so from now, I'll speak about uh, genome. Uh, <clears throat> uh, genome means uh, to, uh, total uh, genetic information. Genome is uh, uh, a word uh, <coughs> uh, to, uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so sorry. Uh, genome uh, means uh, the total genetic information of a species. Uh, uh, genome is coined by combining gene plus ohm. Ohm means the whole in Latin language. So uh, genome is a blueprint of the species, and genome is a. a, a, a and the chemical structure of the genome is DNA. And the genome project uh, is a project to determine the entire nucleotide sequence of a genome. Okay, this is a uh, uh, human, geno uh, human genome. Human genome is uh, uh, divided into the 23 pairs of DNA strands called the uh, chromosome. It, out of them, uh, 22 pairs of uh, 22 uh, pairs are called autosomes, and a pair of sex chromosome. Uh, <coughs> the 22 pairs of autosomes are uh, common uh, between uh, males and females, but the sex chromosomes are different. So uh, ma uh, males have XY and the females have XX. <coughs> And uh, as you can see, uh, each chromosome uh, 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 is uh, 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 present as a pair. And uh, 
uh, one of the chromosome uh, comes from the father uh, and the other comes from mother. And the two sets of chromosomes are called uh, diploid. Uh, and the one set of the chromosome is called uh, the haploid. The third step is the sequencing. The uh, next is the uh, sequencing uh, of the next generation sequencer is called uh, SBS. SBS is the abbreviation of the sequencing by synthesis. And the, in this analysis, uh, <coughs> the uh, reversible terminator is used. Uh, in the case of the uh, Sanger sequences, the terminator, so the uh, dideoxyribonucleotide is not reversible, but uh, uh, in the next generation sequences, the uh, uh, reversible terminator is used. Reversible means that, the, uh, <coughs> so uh, let's see the uh, three prime region. The three prime region uh, is blocked, but the block can be uh, uh, removed. So uh, uh, <clears throat> this region is uh, uh, used to uh, terminate the, uh, uh, the complement uh, elongation of complementary chain, but uh, after that, uh, it is also used to uh, elongate the uh, complementary chain. And uh, uh, fluorescent dye is attached to the uh, base. Uh, base. Okay, as I told, uh, I'll explain the mapping uh, later and the uh, uh, application of the next generation sequencers. Okay, uh, uh, let's see the uh, video of the uh, next generation sequencers. Uh, uh, it is made for, uh, by the uh, uh, company Illumina. Baby sense can you hear the sound workflow is composed of four oh, basic okay. steps sample prep cluster generation hmm. okay eto uh, so if you eto uh, uh, add the sample here the uh, uh, minion uh, determines the sequence by the nanopore technology. And uh, the uh, information is sent to the personal computer. And uh, if the personal computer is connected with the uh, network, uh, the, uh, uh, the data, of, uh, so read sequences uh, obtained from the uh, 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 nanopore, sequence, uh, nanopore sequences uh, analyzed uh, in the cloud, uh, in the cloud, and return the uh, result uh, uh, to the uh, personal computers. Okay, uh, 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 I explained about the uh, sequencing technologies. Next, uh, I'd like to speak about the, what the NGS can do. Uh, next generation uh, uh, next generation sequencers can do. So the next generation sequencers is a tool to determine the nucleotide sequences. Uh, but uh, by uh, determining the nucle uh, by but through the uh, determination of the nucleotide sequences, we can obtain various uh, information, biological information. And, but uh, I think uh, it's a bit earlier, but uh, I think the uh, topic has changed. So uh, I'd like to take a, a break here. Okay, uh, uh, okay I'll start. <coughs> okay, I have explained the, uh, how the nucleotide sequence can be determined. Next, I'll uh, speak about uh, how the nuclear uh, next generation sequencers can be used. As I told, ne next generation sequencer is a game changer and the driving force of current molecular life sciences. But uh, 
it is just a sequences. But why the uh, next generation sequences uh, is uh, become a game changer or driving force? So I'd like to speak about it. Okay, uh, this slide shows a list of the uh, uh, application of the next generation sequences. Uh, <coughs> Be, uh, next generation sequences can be used. Uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, uh, these uh, uh, to, uh, these uh, applications. So uh, genome variation, transcriptome analysis, epigenome analysis, high C, and the metagenome analysis. Unfortunately, uh, today we don't have enough time to explain all the applications. So uh, today. I'll just explain genome variation, transcriptome, and the metagenome analysis. <clears throat> okay, at first I'll explain about the uh, application of uh, next generation sequencer to the genome variation. <clears throat> okay, uh, this slide shows uh, news of 2012 about the 1000 genome project. 1000 genome project means a project to determine the uh, genome sequences of 1000 uh, persons. And uh, not only the 1000 genome project, but also the similar project to determine the uh, enormous number of uh, uh, human genomes. But uh, as I told in the first part of uh, today's talk, the human genome, uh, genome sequences have been determined in 2003. Why have the human genome sequences continued? So uh, if we can associate with uh, such a genome variation with uh, susceptibility to the diseases or uh, effect of the medicine, uh, we can change the uh, uh, method to uh, cure the diseases or uh, a, a prediction of the risk. For, uh, for example, currently, the, uh, or, uh, in this slide, it is uh, uh, written as past, but the, uh, the same drug is uh, given to the older uh, people. But if uh, we can, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, we have uh, information, uh, uh, information about our own genome and uh, uh, where the variation is present. Then uh, if the variation is related to the uh, effect of the medicine, the uh, most proper uh, medicine is given to a uh, person with uh, uh, variations. So such a approach is called, uh, called uh, personalized medicine. Uh, that is uh, the reason of why the uh, human genome sequence is uh, still continued. And uh, if the uh, next generation sequences have not been developed, the, uh, this approach cannot be uh, possible. Okay, uh, Next, I'd like to uh, speak about the uh, other application, transcriptome analysis. But, uh, uh, in order to uh, explain the transcriptome, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, at first I'll uh, review the uh, central dogma, the uh, flow of the genetic information. Okay, uh, the, uh, as I told, the genetic information is encoded on the uh, uh, <coughs> nucleotide sequence of the uh, DNA, uh, uh, of the DNA. And the, uh, the uh, nucleotide sequence of DNA is uh, <coughs> transcribed into RNA. And the information of RNA is uh, translated into proteins. So uh, from DNA to RNA to protein, it is uh, such a uh, flow of the genetic information is called central dogma. And uh, here, the, please uh, note that the uh, <coughs> process uh, uh, of the 
uh, copying the uh, genetic information of DNA to RNA is called transcriptions. And the transcriptome is a, a, a term a, to coin the, uh, a trans, a, a coined term to combine the transcript, transcription and the ohm. And in the explanation of the uh, genome, I told that the ohm is, uh, uh, means a whole in the Latin language. So transcriptome means uh, whole uh, RNAs transcribed uh, 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 from the DNAs. And uh, uh, this is the application of the transcriptome analysis. So well, let's consider a cancer cells and uh, the uh, normal cells. Uh, by applying the RNA-seq to both cells and uh, 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 counting the uh, number of the Vs uh, on each cells, uh, uh, each genus. And uh, the uh, number of the uh, Vs uh, correspond to the expression level of the genes, as I told. So if the uh, number of the Vs is di significantly different uh, between the uh, uh, normal cells and the cancer cells, the gene may be uh, uh, associated with uh, uh, cancers. So a uh, transcriptome analysis can be used to identify the uh, target genes of the uh, cancers. And uh, okay, so uh, uh, in this case, the mapping is used. So uh, if the uh, gen genome sequence is available, we don't need to uh, use the uh, uh, de novo assembly. Uh, instead, the uh, uh, <coughs> mapping is a powerful tool to uh, detect the uh, uh, variation, uh, genome variation, and the uh, uh, transcriptome analysis. Okay, let's return to the uh, uh, <coughs> uh, metagenome analysis. Okay, uh, this is a, a human, and the human body uh, uh, has a, a, a many resident micro, uh, uh, resident bacteria. Uh, so uh, in the mouse, and in the intestine and uh, on the, uh, and the data uh, obtained by the next generation sequences is uh, summarized like this. So for example, this is a comparison of the uh, uh, bacterial populations uh, among the uh, uh, different body parts, feces. So it is uh, intestinal bacteria and the saliva and the gastric juice and the skin. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, graph shows uh, uh, a taxonomic composition of the bacteria. So uh, <coughs> for example, so uh, by applying heat, the uh, uh, double strand uh, the, uh, double strand DNA is denatured and uh, become a single strand. And uh, apply the uh, primer, and uh, uh, the, uh, DNA polymerases, then the complementary chains are generated for each DNA strand. Okay, uh, contig sets is uh, uh, just a nucleotide sequences. So, uh, but the, uh, it is a, a part of the bacterial genome. So uh, there are the genes uh, in the uh, contig sequences and some softwares can uh, predict the genes uh, on the uh, nucleotide sequences. So uh, uh, like this, so prediction of the genes in the genome is uh, uh, examined. Then the, but the, it is just the uh, region of the gene is predicted. Uh, uh, at this stage, uh, it is not clear whether this gene uh, uh, how the gene uh, function, uh, how does the gene function? So the uh, <coughs> nucleotide sequence uh, of this region is translated into uh, amino acid sequence. 
in the computer and uh, uh, predicted the amino acid sequences uh, compared with uh, each of the amino acid sequences in the uh, uh, protein uh, database. Therefore, example, if the uh, gene pro uh, predicted gene product uh, of A, uh, it shows a significant sequence similarity to the uh, uh, protein regi uh, uh, registered in the database, protein X registered in uh, uh, amino acid sequence database. And if the function of the X is already known, then the uh, function of this gene product is predicted to be similar or the same uh, uh, as the uh, function of X. Uh, this is, uh, 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 in this step, uh, such things, uh, 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 such operation is uh, carried out. So uh, this is the uh, metagenomic sequence analysis. Okay, uh, finally, uh, I'll uh, uh, speak about the ana uh, analysis of the metagenome, uh, metagenome method for the marine environment. So it is a marine metagenomics. Uh, genomics. Okay, uh, let's see the uh, video. Uh, uh, in this video, the uh, metagenome analysis is applied to the uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, microorganisms uh, near the uh, octo uh, uh, coral reefs. So the, uh, in the first day of this program, you have learned the marine ecology. And uh, one of the subjects of the marine ecology is a coral reef, I think. So uh, the metagenome analysis is also applied to the marine ecology. And uh, most of them, so the 30,000 compounds, uh, uh, the most of them are considered to be generated by microorganisms. But uh, more than 99% of the microorganisms have not been able to be cultivated. So, uh, uh, <coughs> so the uh, Professor Fujita are trying to search for useful genetic, uh, genetic resources by a cultivation, in the, a cultivation independent, uh, independent metagenome uh, method. And uh, they are uh, uh, trying two approaches. The first approach is uh, introduction of the metagenome DNA into cultivable bacteria. The other method is uh, uh, sequencing, <coughs> sequencing the uh, genomes. So uh, we should do some experiment to whether uh, uh, the uh, gene product uh, actually shows our, our functions. But uh, uh, <coughs> this is uh, uh, just a sequence data obtained from the next generation sequencers. So uh, in order to do uh, the uh, check of the function, we should synthesize the uh, genes uh, and it takes uh, time and cost. It is a demerit of this approach. And uh, Professor Fujita uh, used this approach and uh, collected uh, new uh, compound. Uh, uh, all of them belongs to Shiderohua. Shiderohua is a compound which can bind to iron ion. ion, ion. And uh, he collected uh, different type of Siderohoa from tidal flat sand mud, deep sea sediment, and uh, from sponge. And uh, by using the metagenome data analysis, uh, they identified the genes uh, uh, related to the uh, generation of the D these Siderohoas. So metagenome analysis, can be used to search for the uh, useful genes from the aquatic environment. Okay, uh, this is a classification of the viruses. Uh, the classification system is uh, different from the people to people, but the, uh, I think it is uh, one of the uh, uh, authorized uh, uh, method. And uh, uh, <coughs> 
that the uh, classification is a uh, uh, artificial one. So uh, not the uh, uh, classification. Uh, the, so the classification does not reflect the uh, evolutionary relationship. And uh, group one uh, consists of the double strand DNA viruses. Group two uh, consists of the single strand DNA viruses. And group three, uh, it is a, a DNA or RNA viruses, uh, but uh, they uh, share uh, characteristics that you uh, encode the uh, reverse, transcript, uh, reverse transcriptase. And uh, group four, uh, it is a, a double strand RNA viruses. Uh, group five, uh, it is a negative sense single strand RNA viruses. Uh, negative sense means a complementary chain of the messenger RNA. And uh, uh, group six, uh, it is a positive sense single strand RNA viruses. A positive sense means uh, uh, it is uh, uh, same as a uh, function, as a, uh, it can function as a messenger RNA. And group seven, it is uh, uh, assigned, so uh, uh, not classified viruses. And uh, a subviral agent is classified uh, as a group eight. And the coronavirus is, uh, belongs to the group uh, six. Okay, uh, from now I'll uh, talk about the uh, information of, of, the, uh, of your presentations. Uh, each group I'll assign a paper. And so group one, uh, I'll assign this paper, uh, the biomes in marine ecosystems reveal remarkable invertebrate RNA virus diversity. Uh, it is a paper of, uh, I think this is, uh, so uh, this year. Uh, so in this paper, uh, so it is a, a review article. So uh, they, uh, 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 reported uh, uh, marine metagenomes, uh, how marine metagenomes uh, used as a resource of, of novel enzymes. Okay, and I assign uh, this uh, paper to group three, microbial genomics amidst uh, the Arctic crisis. Okay, then the, uh, the sequences, which shows uh, a significant sequence similarity to the uh, given uh, amino acid sequence, so the a lysozyme of the cow is detected like this. And uh, let's see the uh, alignment. Okay, the top is uh, uh, identical amino acid sequences are detected at the top. And uh, I think it is better to use this one and uh, Hmm. So uh, in the in the uh, in this uh, database searching, we just use the default setting. So the the top one hundred sequences are uh, shown here. The so, but the lysozyme uh, included in the uh, uh, almost all the uh, uh, animals. So. Uh, the mammal uh, lysozyme is uh, very close to cow enzyme, uh, cow lysozyme. So, the even the uh, 100 positions, the uh, obtained sequences are very uh, close to the uh, <coughs> uh, to, uh, cow lysozymes. So the uh, used to the blast P, uh, the blast P is used for the uh, function prediction of the uh, metagenome analysis. Okay, is it you, uh, uh, I correctly answer your question? So you want to uh, try to search for the uh, sequence similarity of plankton proteins. So if you have amino acid sequence of the plankton proteins, you can use the, uh, this BRAST server. And the BRAST, uh, the BRAST can be downloaded 
on your uh, and the data also, and the database also downloaded from the uh, uh, Brasto uh, uh, this site. So you can uh, try the Brasto search on your uh, uh, personal computers. Okay, uh, I think uh, almost the uh, time is over. So yes. the uh, uh, <coughs> In the afternoon, uh, uh, it's a time for the preparation of the uh, 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 presentations. So uh, I'll uh, move to the breakout rooms to uh, uh, hear the uh, question um, uh, 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 in this afternoon. Okay, so uh, let's take a break for the uh, lunch. So, hello, Tosensei. Hello. So, it's already uh, most, uh, most, uh, one minute later on. Yeah. Uh, it will be for 40, yeah, 340. Yeah. Just there, 339. Hmm. So, now the participants oh, okay. already think, 20, 22. Yeah, it's time to start. Okay, Bibin Sensei. Bibin Sensei, may I start? Okay, uh, please. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a final session. Uh, <coughs> the final session is a presentation about the marine uh, metagenomics. I assigned uh, three different papers to each group and uh, based on the paper, each group will give a presentation. Okay, then, uh, first group, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Is my voice clear? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm the leader on this topic. And uh, from group one, we'll explain the summarize uh, of the result and discussion in the journal Firearms in Marine Ecosystem, Repel Remarkable Invertebrate RNA Virus Diversity. Uh, uh, next slide. Uh, this is the member of group one that is uh, Putu Wilandari and me Putu Echapianing Arinisa and Jopita Larasati cannot take the part of final presentation. And then Ana Agung Ole and Abelia Oksana. Next. And uh, Kawasaki Kai, Hikari Harada, Sogo Siroyama and Timothy Kenolu. Next slide. Uh, the outline of the presentation that we'll explain about first is characterization of RNA virus across differences and uh, characterization of double uh, stranded RNA viruses and characterization of negative stains RNA viruses, uh, positive stains RNA virus, uh, likelihood of host sharing and switching pattern in accordance with ecology and discussion. Um, the next slide will explain by uh, Kak Timothy. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, are my voice clear? Yes. Okay, thank you, Sensei. Uh, this time, I would like to explain uh, mainly about the characterization of RNA firearms across differences. The differences that are mentioned in this study consist of three in China, which is Yellow Sea, East China Sea, and South China Sea. So. Throughout this study, it was revealed that there are uh, they use 58 aquatic invertebrate species. In total, they took about 696 individuals uh, of all these species. And from that, they generate 58 RNA sequencing libraries and about 2 billion, more than 2 billion pair ends generated. And as you could see this, there are uh, a few Various group they are like wolf from virales, chinchu virales, durna virales, and so on and so on. And the sixth group of the invertebrate would be in Polyceta, Crustacea, Hexanoplia, Bifavia, Cephalopod, and Gastropod. And then through all this study, it was revealed that there are 117 genomes have RNA dependent RNA polymers or to be short, RDRP regions. 
And then they found that about 106 novel and distinct virus. So it's kind of like a new virus, newly identified. And then the, the known virus consists up to 97, which in the group of Dunaviralis, Tativiridae, Hunia virales, Hantaviridae, Picorna virales, Flaviridae, Epiliviralis, Solemo viride, and the last one is Tombus viride. All these virus group are actually found in throughout three seas, but only four virus group that could be found constantly in all the three seas, which is Sobli virales, Hunia virales, Duna virales, and Picorna virales. In this study, they are unable to classify uh, about 246 virus because the absence of RDRP conserved domain. They stated that uh, because of these results, they stated that uh, there are unlikely existence of endogenous viral elements, but still, each year are predicted to harbor unique virus. So there are no endogenous viral elements, but it's still unique. Each virus in each year are still unique. Uh, I think that's all for my part. Okay, I will continue. Uh... The journal characterized five proteolite virus in Crustacea and Bivalvia from the South China Sea and Crustacea from the Yellow Sea. The virus uh, displayed limited sequence uh, similarity with the recognized toti virus. Their genome size uh, ranges uh, from one to eight uh, kilobase pair. Unlike uh, the typical virus genome length, uh, 4.6 until 7.0 kilobase pair. In Totiviridae, uh, below genetic analysis uh, revealed a clustering of Bifalvia gabri like virus uh, and one from the South, South China Sea with Crustacea gabri like virus H3 from the Yellow Sea suggesting possible host sharing between uh, differences uh, during evolution. Uh, we also observed, uh, the journal also observed uh, possible host uh, sharing within the same sea as we, as the journal found uh, that Crustacea gabri-like virus and one in Charybdis uh, feriata and Crustacea gabri-like virus and two uh, Shila olive olivacea were clustered together and uh, shared, uh, shared a high uh, similarity. Thank you. Also, the journal characterized the class this year, Bania like virus H1, and classified it as a Mario like virus because it fell into the clustered group containing Mario. My ability and the best PLST hit was Hubei Muri of the virus 5 with 21% protein similarity. We could not, this journal could not classify by Barbia, Banya like virus N3 in Banya virus into family because it exhibited limited similarity to any well defined family in Banya virus. Later, we grouped it with unclassified Banya virus, including a high Bunya like virus 3 and Wuhan snail virus. Thank you. From the figure 3 and 5, in supporting information, we know that the Crustacea jingle like virus and one from the South China Sea fell within the recently established Surfide. It displays a typical true virus structure, including uh, the glycoprotein and containing an RDRP and RNA keeping domain. Uh, domain. Uh, however, the reserve location of the RDRP and RNA keeping domain show that the deserved genome structure of two viruses. Uh, it had 97% nucleotide similarity with the previously identified Bay High Hermit Crab virus 3, which we also acquired in the South China Sea. Yeah, thank you. Uh, here is a description of the three viruses of the virus. Uh, they form a cluster belonging to the Flaviridae grade, suggesting that they are flaviviruses. Uh, when compared to 
invertebrate uh, flavorases, these were al also most closely related to squid squids versus one. And in addition, red like hairy case C, uh, which is present in eukaryotic cells, many bacteria and archaea, and is involved in ATP dependent RNA and DNA unwinding, was identified in the bivalve amarillo like virus N1 further supporting the theory of gene exchange between host and viruses. Uh, one virus, is, one virus, which means uh, Vivalvia tori-like virus D1, D1, had only a partial genome, including the RDRP region and belong to the Tombus viridae. And it also has 30% amino acid sequence similarity with the most closely related versus species. Uh, both of these viruses are distantly related to viruses of Carbus virinae and Procido virinae, suggesting that uh, it suggests that the Bevalvia tori like virus D1 is a uh, Thomas like virus. Thank you. Uh, uh, okay, that's uh, the presentation from uh, group one. Uh, we're sorry over the missed books. And if anyone have question, please uh, ask. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So I'd like to accept the uh, question or comment from other groups. So uh, group two or group three, are there any question or comment? Okay, um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I would like to ask for the group one uh, from the presentations. Thank you for the lot of information that you gave us, of, to us. Um, I'm just a bit curious and still uh, really confused about uh, uh, the, the things you guys said about RNA positive and RNA negative, um, yeah. I, I don't know about that kind of things. Uh, maybe can you guys uh, tell tell me about those kind of uh, RNA? Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, I think I'll, I'll try to answer Baba's question. So the differences between positive sense uh, viral RNA and negative sense viral RNA. So basically we know that, uh, that a DNA are double helix, right? They are like two, two, two chain and then they make a pair. But if in RNA, they are just single. So in a positive sense viral RNA, it's actually uh, similar to the mRNA itself. It could be directly translated to make a new mRNA strain or RNA strain. But in the negative sense viral RNA, it's actually the complementary of the positive sense itself. So if you want to translate or reproduce the negative sense RNA, you need to convert it first to the positive sense. And after that, only after that, it could be translated. Uh, yeah, basically that's the, the differences between the two. Oh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. That means a lot, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you can start. Okay, please. Okay. Hello. From now, we are going to present about marine metagenomics and group three summarized micro microbial genomics and amidst the arctic crisis so next please oh sorry
thank you for the time. The Arctic Circle covers about 6% of the surface and the Earth comprises 21 million square kilometers. The Arctic is a vast ice-covered ocean surrounded by a few trees, frozen ground, and ice-dwelling organisms, fish and marine mammals, birds, and some human communities. The Arctic Ocean account for about 10% of total global production for consumption men. Undiscovered oil and gas reserve about 19 billion barrel of oil. 1669 billion cubic, cubic feet of natural gas and 44 billion barrels of liquid natural gas lie in the northern region of the Arctic Ocean with about 64 in the offshore area. Microbes in the Arctic play an important role in the feedback loops that amplify the impact of Arctic changes. Microbes are the first responder to the Arctic crisis. Small in size but in large number, the microbes inhibit diverse needs in the Arctic. In particular, many microbial needs are instead at the margin between frozen subreds and a temperature change the transfer of the Arctic environment from a frozen solid to a liquid could radically change a niches above available to microbial population. Facing in the Arctic crisis, the present the need to address many of the basic knowledge gaps in the cold region microbiology, which have the potential to limit climate models and information to policymakers. However, the prospect of rapid and radical change in the Arctic microbial ecosystem should prompt a system, systematic investigation of genomic diversity in the ecosystem of first by the effects of warming. Next, please. At maximum, Arctic sea ice currently extends to about 15 million, covering almost the entire Arctic Ocean. In four tiers of satellite observation, the extent of sea ice in the Arctic Ocean has decreased by capability from a September minimum of 7,7 million in 1959 to a low of 3,6 million in 2012, with the last 30 years respecting 13 levels lowest in the satellite's epoch. Changes in the Arctic landmass also affect the Arctic, showing and degradation of Permafrost terrestrial organic matter (TDOM) for river transport to the Arctic Ocean. Arctic glacier and ice sheet are starting to experience warming consequences, but the melt experience to date is only fiction. The largest of this glacial ice mass is by far the Greenland ice sheet, which occupies one. 7 million and is currently absorbing water equivalent to 27,4 sea level rise. Glacial water is currently the largest contributor to sea level rise, making this relationship a key public concern and research priority. Like permafrost, glacial ice is a fast responsibility of climate sensitive microbial, biomass, and genomic diversity. Similarly, microbial process on the surface and layers of the Arctic glaciers and Greenland sea ice have the potential to amplify the effects of warming climates in glaciers. Critically, the evolution of anosic condition in sublacial habitat that might support metagenesis via hydrogenetic and acetoclastic pathways is very clear. Similarly, on the bare east surface, members of the glacier Age, Alga, Signemot, Pitekae, from a very prominent ice darkening biofilm on the southwestern margin of the Greenland ice sheet. 
Thank you. Excuse me, your mic is off now. Uh, okay, I would like to continue the material. Uh, key microbial process in critical zones of Arctic change. Um, uh, first, we know uh, sea, sea ice habitat loss in the Arctic Ocean. Uh, the loss of sea itself uh, prompts changes in sea ice albedo feedback, uh, where the high surface uh, reflectance of sea ice to solar energy in decrease in contrast to the increased uh, absorption of solar energy to the darker surface of open water. Mm, these changes have the potential to influence the planetary energy budget. Uh, sea ice is a complex microbial habitat marked by profound gradients in temperature, uh, chemistry and salinity uh, across a vertical profile of a few meters. Uh, within the sea ice column, uh, microbes inhabit highly saline water within the four spaces and brine channels are created as ice formation excludes the soft soil. Uh, the interface between the base of the sea ice column and the underlying seawater is marked by high density of microbes. Uh, the decline extent of sea ice convergence uh, therefore has profound impact on the border Arctic ocean ecosystem. And the loss of thicker, structurally more complex, multi-year sea ice diminish the range of productive niche productiveness available to sea ice microbes. Uh, uh, next we have concomitant of the lost sea ice, the expansion of open water as a habitat in the Arctic Ocean is prompting the immigration of microbial groups, uh, once thought limited to lower latitudes with potential effects on bacterial lineage uh, that may be endemic in the Arctic Ocean. In summary, understanding the rain shift uh, genomic adaptation and population structure of important marine primary producers, uh, such as this cyanobacteria, will inform our prediction of how the food webs of the Arctic Ocean will respond to a future in which uh, the extent of a long fury of a sea ice is severely curtailed. Uh, uh, next, we have carbon release from towing permafrost. Uh, nearly half of global soil organic carbon is found in Arctic soils. <clears throat> uh, most of uh, this carbon is stored within permanent, permanent, permanently frozen ground, including permafrost. Uh, permafrost, uh, soil that remain frozen for two or more consecutive years. However, with warming temperature across Arctic lands, this accumulated stock of legacy carbon from the past climates does not represent a permanent sink of carbon. Uh, changes in Arctic land also affect Arctic river and the Arctic ocean. Towing and degradation of permafrost will liberate substantial terrestrially derived organic matter or TDOM for ravine transport to the Arctic Ocean. Uh, approximately uh, 44 uh, TG organic carbon is released and, and annually ton gram up to the ocean from coastal and interstellar permafrost within the Siberian Arctic alone, uh, the bulk of which predicted to be respired to carbon dioxide. Uh, microbes within coastal Arctic for uh, respond readily to influx of TDOM. Uh, permafrost itself is considered as an unusual microbial habitat since it, since it represents a structurally heterogeneous environmental matrix that combines a long-term deep frozen store of 
microbial biomass and gen genomic diversity from past climates. Uh, understanding the potential for methanotropy to mitigate methane release from towing permafrost will require pairing biochemical process measuring with the capability to resolve the diverse pathways for methane oxidation. Uh, to support an uh, accurate prediction of methane release, such as approach must embrace the complexity offered by a net outcome that is sums of interaction within dynamic microbial consortia in structurally heterogeneous habitats defined by fluctuating oxygen, methane, terminal electron acceptor, and water level. Next. Oh. Okay, Bibi Sensei. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think it is better to. Uh, uh, to uh, so, Hello? they opened up. Excuse me? Uh, oh, yeah. What do you think now? Okay. okay, I would like to. Uh, uh, okay. Hello? 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 Okay, okay. Okay. I can mute, unmute myself now. Okay. Thank you. I would like to explain about microbial impacts on Arctic glaciers and the Greenland ice sheet. And human dimensions of the changing Arctic biosphere expecting and infection disease risk. Arctic glaciers, ice caps, and the Greenland ice sheet have started to experience the crippling consequences of Arctic warming. Yet the melt that has been experienced to date is a mere fraction of what can be expected as the Arctic continues to warm. The largest of these glacial ice meshes is by far the Greenland ice sheet, which occupies uh, 1.7 million square kilometer and currently sequesters the water equivalent of 7.4 meter of sea level risk. The glacial system are home to evident and diverse life forms has been long established. This century has been a refreshed synthesis of evidence of biodiverse microbial ecosystem associated with glaciers and ice sheets. And acknowledgement that this biomass, biomass contribute to global biogeochemical cycles like performatures, Glacial ice is a fast, climate sensitive repository of microbial biomass and genomic diversity. Equally, microbial uh, processes at the surfaces and beds of Ar Arctic glaciers and the Greenland ice sheets have been potential to amplify the impact of climate warming on the glaciers. In contrast, the surface of Arctic glaciers receive abundant solar radiation in summer. This prompt and this prompts the seasonal development of a range of microbial community types predominantly supported by phototrophy. Importantly, the accumulation of microbial biomass replete with photosynthetic and photos photoprotective pigments and declare the kerosene dark organic matter at the glacier's surface has the potential to influence the melting rate of the glacier surface. The reddish surface reflections of glaciers consequence to microbial growth in surface habitats has been trimmed in recent years. Estimates of microbial contribution to glaciers melting are emerging. However, integration of microbial associated parameters in estimates of sea level rise remains an active research goal. And the next about human dimension of the changing Arctic bioprospecting bio and infection disease risks is growing commercial and political interests, interest coupled with increased logical, logistical accessibility is likely to stimulate interest in Arctic bioprospecting. Bio Adaptation for life in the cold found with the resurface of Arctic genomic diversity uh, can be industrial useful 
Example include eczema with low temperature optima, low alcohol yields, antifreeze and ice binding proteins, and potential antimicrobial. There is a long history of human activities that have contaminated the Arctic in many ways, from hydrocarbon exploitation to military activities, including the largest nuclear explosion to date. This has resulted in local diver contamination of the Arctic. Likewise, long-range atmosphere, atmospheric transport of pollutants and the global displacement effect has led to the depositions of pollutants in the Arctic from the mid latitudes for at least three millennia. The potential roles uh, of microbes in modulating of exacerbating the threat posed by contaminate contaminate uh, liberate by acrid warming. Arctic warming is a current focus of, for research addressing radioclade resistant organic pollutant, black carbon, mercury, and heavy metal conta contaminants. Okay, finally, this change in the accessibility and ecology of the Arctic bring with them pressures for human health care. This includes increased demand on the limited health care service available or the immigration of emerging infectious diseases, for example, as spectrum move forward, this may necessitate and enhanced microbiological surveillance and diagnostic capability and distributed or ubiquitous so ubiquitous genomic sensing may prove important in this testing and managing microbial threats as the Arctic experience this process change. Thank you, next please. Um, excuse me. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Challenge three before this slide. Uh, you want to back this right? Uh, okay, sorry, thank you. I'll continue. And challenge three, biomolecular stability as a prerequisite for integrated multi-omics. The high level of sample integrity required for most forms of microbial Omics studies and exacerbate this challenge to transcend this descriptive inventories of genomic diversity. The systematic capture of trans Microbiogen products can offer greater functional insight. Indeed, integ integrating different strands of omics methodologies can allow an investigator to reveal how a microbe is contributing to ecosystem function. Such contributions may be through many different routes with important contributions by active, dormant, damaged or dead microbes in turn which are difficult to disentangle both practically and epistemologically. Within the limb of multi-omic studies, the paucity of in situ metatranscriptome studies of Arctic 
microbiota present a um, notable lacuna in our understanding of ecosystem responses to climate stresses. Multiple challenges must be addressed in implementing such experimental strategies. First B, micro, microbial mRNA has a very brief half-life. Secondly, mRNA is a minor species of RNA when compared to the abundance of R RNA within the cell. Metagenomics in contrast to single cell genomics. Metagenomics provides community-based genome sequences of many diverse species simultaneously. This Con information allows collection correlation based work to compare the abundance of particular gene families to the respective environment. Metagenomics provides an overview of species abundance in the micro microbiome and ca characterizes common metabolic pathways available in the ecosystem. The contribution LAB make to the pool and functional process can be discerned using metagenomic data. Armed with this knowledge, the potential role LAB play in the community can be determined. Metagenomics is regularly used to determine the microbial diversity in order to direct further analysis of the sample at hand. Zhang 2016 used metagenome sequencing to study novel fermented foods. These insights into fermented foods revealed potentially interesting Raptobacillus strains that were then isolated from the samples. This targeted approach to omics data is the most effective method when working with a single omics set. However, combining other omics data unveils a more dynam dynamic image of the metagenome. This is most commonly applied when inten integrating genomic and transcriptomic data. This data can be indispensable to understanding the functional role members fill in a given system. Nevertheless, reducing the degradation of myomolecules within the parent environmental matrix appears vital for robust multi-omic studies. This approach has the advantage of allowing experimental manipulation under precisely controlled conditions where confounding factors can be minimal, minimal, minimized and treatments administered, administered and measured precisely. For environmental 
matrix that can be sampled and transferred frozen in bulk. This strategy has proven fruitful. Such studies address the issue of biomolecule integrity by immediate extraction of nucleic acids and have the conspicuous advantage of permitting experimentally replicated application of treatment under controlled conditions. Thank you. Uh, okay, and finally for the conclusion for each uh, challenge, challenge one, two, three, and four. Uh, uh, okay, so connecting all the four challenges above that concluded in the cold places in Arctic, but also other positive reasons are in Arctic, their less human and society impact in Arctic because of what we know microbes play a vital role in the response of the Arctic anthropogenic warming. And we also know due to permafrost, there's a lot of microbes uh, uh, who's in, uh, inhabit in Arctic. And there's been a lot of uh, solution has been uh, proposed, but it's very hard to uh, realize it due to the condition in the Arctic. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you have any question or comment? Uh, yeah, I have uh, some question maybe. Oh, please. Uh, yeah, for the group three, can you go to challenge three slide? Uh, yeah, the slide of challenge three. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, uh, I, uh, for this one, I still don't have any conclusion, but uh, the simple one, uh, the simple one for this challenge three is uh, what is your opinion for student three is uh, the simple one so I can uh, understand uh, which one uh, yeah which one if you have uh, like a simple simple statement for the student three because uh, like before I still didn't understand for what uh, what the group three uh, percentage in the challenge three yeah maybe that's my question sir Uh, okay, I would like to help Ayano to explain a little bit uh, the main point from the challenge uh, three. Uh, okay, the conclusion is uh, nevertheless, reducing the degradation of biomolecules within the parent's environmental matrix appears vital for robust multi-omics studies. Uh, this approach has the advantage of allowing experimental manipulation under precisely controlled condition where conf confounding factor can be minus size uh, and treatment administered and measured precisely. Uh, for environmental uh, matrices that can be sampled and transferred frozen in bulk, this strategy has proven, uh, proven fruitful such study address the issue of biomolecular integrity by immediate extraction of nucleic acids and have the conspicuous advantage of permitting experimentally replicate application of treatment under controlled condition. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, maybe the, uh, my last question is in the conclusion. I want to know a uh, correlation about the challenge one, two, and three. Is there any correlation? Uh, maybe uh, your opinion uh, in your group three. In the conclusion of challenge one, two, yeah. Last slide. Uh, yeah. The for, uh, yeah. Is there any correlation for the challenge one, two, three, and four? The correlation for that uh, for challenge. Uh, okay, for the conclusion, uh, our group already decided that from the challenge one to challenge four is important, but also problematic. So the opposing of the solution can become pretty hard to do. Uh, one example, 
due to this climate crisis are carbon sequestration in the Arctic Ocean, aiding models of greenhouse gas released from the permafrost, a refining, a refining projection of sea level rise or designing energy efficient catalysts. Uh, within these four challenges and their connection to metagenome, uh, we have identified uh, conceptual and technical barriers, as well as potential uh, routes to surmount this obstacle to progress in Arctic microbial genomic. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, that's already clear. And yeah, thank you for group to answer my question. Um, I have a question and uh, I don't remember which slide was, but uh, there are some explanation about the metanhydrate like or something. And I interpreted that topic that the you know, solid met methane will oxidize and finally create the carbon dioxide mm -hmm. and increase the uh, the concentration in, in the atmosphere. The, I mean, the carbon dioxide rate in the atmosphere will increase. But uh, I once heard that the methane hydrate will be the potential energy resource. Uh, so if we could use it, uh, take it up from the underground, and if we can use it without harming the environment, that will uh, both solve the energy problem and then solve the environmental global warming problem, I think. But is that correct or that idea could be, is that idea, uh, is that realistic or that's not so realistic? I would like to hear the answer. Okay, could you answer group three? Okay. Uh, in our conclusion, we have a little bit topic that talk about methane. Uh, okay, this is uh, one example due to this climate crisis, uh, our carbon sequestration in the Arctic Ocean, aiding models of greenhouses gas releases from the permafrost refining projection of sea level rise or designing energy efficiency catalysts. Uh, within these four challenges and their connection to metagenome, we have identified conceptual and technical barriers through potential as roads to surmount this obstacle in progress, uh, Arctic my, my Probial genomics. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, oh, uh, are you all right? Sorry. Uh, please. Yushka san, please. Is it enough? Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you for your answering. Okay, uh, I think time is over. So, Vivian uh, Sensei, could you chair the uh, uh, remaining session? Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Uh, Professor Tok, uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor Gede Karan give to uh, would like to give a speech, maybe two or three minutes. Hello, Professor Gede Karan. Hello, yes, Sensei. Can you hear okay. me? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll give you a time, please. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Honorable 
speakers here, uh, Professor To Sensei, Professor Bibin, and maybe Professor Artana, Professor Hendrawan, and uh, and uh, all administration staff who supported this program from KGU and from Udayana University also. There's uh, Ibu Dewa, yeah, Ibu Pebri, yeah. But maybe he or she not uh, joined today. So, and also uh, all students, uh, our precious time flies like an arrow, yeah. Maybe last uh, this one month. Uh, and now we are getting to the closing time for our uh, summer science program. So, at the end of this uh, program, on behalf of um, Faculty of Marine Science and Fisheries, Diana University, I would like to say uh, many thanks for your all uh, kindness and support, especially from KGU uh, staff yeah. and all students also to participate in this uh, program and getting along with the thoughts uh, program, with the thoughts uh, schedule also. Uh, I'm convinced that, uh, as Bibin Sensei or Professor Bibin said, that the most valuable outcome of this workshop or of this program is uh, uh, we are getting together uh, during this uh, pandemic, on this pandemic 19 virus, Corona virus. We still can uh, st uh, stay together by online uh, activities. That's most uh, valuable and we are knowing each other, especially for student. And uh, of course, this is very uh, uh, beneficial for us and uh, in stranger of our uh, collaboration between KGU and Udayana University. At last, uh, we would like to remember a words, a Japanese word, yeah, that uh, uh, very uh, inspired me every time I join the meeting. That is uh, Ichigo Ichi. I think, uh, I'm sorry, if, please correct me if I'm mistaken about the meaning. Yeah? So Ichigo Ichi uh, means uh, every moment or every meeting has a unique experience and a unique opportunity also. So now all of you students uh, has a good opportunity by this uh, program. I think that's all of my uh, closing remarks on behalf of uh, Professor Artana as a Dean of Faculty of Medicine and Fisheries. So finally, see you maybe next program and maybe by uh, luring or uh, daring, I mean, uh, offline or uh, online. And thank you for uh, your kind uh, participation eh? and thank you for your all cooperation. Thank you, thank you, Sente. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Karam. So on a name, and then next on behalf of uh, KGU, Dean KGU Prujiwara Sensei, I would like to uh, request to Toh Sensei. I okay. would like to give some closing remarks. Thank you. Okay, so now all the programs have finished. First of all, I'd like to express my sincere thankfulness to all the lecturers for their contribution to this program. And I also express my gratitude to all the participants for your uh, splendid presentations and active discussion. From now, uh, we will evaluate your presentations and give you a score and a certificate. As for certificate, it will take some time, so please wait for a while. And uh, at the opening ceremony, uh, I told that there, uh, this program has two themes. One of them is, needless to say, the uh, learning the uh, basic knowledge of the marine sciences. The other is the experience uh, to this uh, discussion with uh, uh, students of different countries. Currently, the globalization has rapidly processed and uh, proceeding in various fields, including the economy and the culture. And in addition to the bright sides, the globalization has a dark side, such as a global warming and the corona pandemic. We should work on such worldwide problems together. So the communication with the people of different countries becoming an essential skill. We are glad 
if this program provides you an opportunity to expand your world globally. And Udayana University and Kwansei Gakuin University conclude a memorandum of understanding. And we have several international exchange programs based on the MOU. Before the pandemic corona, we had several on-site exchange programs. So we have uh, sent Japanese students to Indonesia in, in Basri. Uh, we have invited Indonesian students to Japan. If the situation of the pandemic will uh, be improved, we'd like to resume the uh, on-site program. However, for the present, we will have no choice but to maintain the international exchange through the online program. So uh, we are now planning a new online program. Uh, it is focusing on SDGs. We will announce this program uh, through the university office. If you are interested in the, uh, the program, please join the program again. And uh, I'll stop the legacy remark and let's close the, the program. And I'm looking forward uh, to seeing you again. Uh, until that time, please stay uh, healthy. And uh, Sampai Jumpalagi, Saya Bero Harap, Dapat Meri Hato Andalagi, Suatu Hari Nanti. Hati Hati. Dada. Bye bye, Sensei. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. So now we are going to close. So sampai jumpa lagi. <laughs> <laughs> ya, terima kasih banyak uh, semuanya. Ya, terima kasih. Ya, jaga jaga kesehatan. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So I am going to close. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much for the